Hey there, welcome to PC Mag Live. I'm Samara Lynn here with Sasha Seekin. And as usual, we have today's top trending tech news. We have one cool thing to show you, and we have one of your questions that we will answer. So let's get started right on the news. Sasha, T Mobile got a very interesting offer. Yeah, okay, so we've known for a while that Japanese carrier SoftBank wants to buy T Mobile and merge it with Sprint. So yesterday, we heard that a French company called Iliad, which is known by the consumer brand Free in France, also wants to buy T-Mobile. And they offered about $15 billion for 56% of T-Mobile. And now Iliad is this really interesting company because uh, they're very much a dot-com company. They're run by this crazy, loud-mouthed, maverick founder CEO named Xavier Neal, who is like the fifth the fifth richest man in France, and he, he, he got started with sex chat lines on Minitel, and now, now he owns uh, you know, one of the biggest ISPs and one of the biggest mobile carriers in France, and uh, very much a maverick, low cost, high quality services, but a lot of people are saying that he's basically biting off more than he can chew here. Because Iliad itself is worth a lot less than T-Mobile is. And so from a purely financial perspective, the SoftBank deal looks a lot more appealing to uh, T-Mobile's investors. The issue, though, is that uh, SoftBank wants to merge T-Mobile and Sprint, which is very, very controversial, whereas Iliad would uh, not reduce us from four to three carriers in this country. Is there any chance that T-Mobile is taking this at all under any sort of consideration? Well, the New York Times says that uh, Deutsche Telekom, the majority owner of T-Mobile, already rejected Iliad's bid. But one of the things that this illustrates um, is a bunch of analysts are saying this means that there are going to be more bidders out there than just SoftBank, that, th that this is really going to start the ball rolling in terms of international bidders for T-Mobile. And so that means that we may be able to find someone who wants to buy T-Mobile away from Deutsche Telekom, but who offers an option that's more competitive than reducing us from four to three carriers. Wow. Well, there you go. It's probably going to be a lot of stuff happening with T-Mobile as all these companies try to woo for it. Mm -hmm. So our second story is about this, this trending um, topic about USB device security. Yeah, now this is something that I kind of need you to explain to me because, so I heard about this bad USB thing and it immediately uh, mushroomed into these crazy headlines of like, don't plug a USB anything into anything, they'll steal all your data. <laughs> right. So like, how real is that? <laughs> well, you know, this is, a, this is actually real because what the, um, uh, what the problem is, is that you can embed this malware onto the controller chip on any USB device, not just a stick, but on, you know, mice, keyboard. And, but the thing that I don't get is this isn't a flaw that hasn't been known. Mm -hmm. It's just all of a sudden, I guess the researchers show how easy it actually is to do. Yeah, now my question though is, does the malware have to be embedded through uh, physical access to the USB device? Or um, is this something that can be transmitted remotely through the internet? Um, that was my take on when I read um, about how the researchers did this. I mean, if you have any physical access to any machine, you mm -hmm. obviously already have a big security compromise. So, I mean, I talked with our security analyst, Famita Rashid, uh, on this, and she essentially said, even though this is known about for a while in the industry, the lesson here is that um, you sh we shouldn't be using USB um, devices for file transfer. You know, so wait a minute, throw out all your external hard drives? Well, at least if, when you're dealing with sensitive you know, environments, you know, encrypted um, file transfers, that's really what a lot of businesses should rely on. But you got to admit, the convenience of USB is yeah. very alluring. So f from, a, from a personal perspective, though, OK, I have a USB hard drive in my house that I use to back up my stuff. It sits on my desk all day, backs up my, backs up my uh, PC. Do mm -hmm. I need to throw that out now because somebody will hack it? You know, definitely not. And I okay. think that is there's a lot of hype in that regard with this story. But of course, you need a comprehensive security solution. You need mm -hmm. a firewall. You need anti-malware because you have to know there is a risk. Okay. So. Okay. All right. So our third story is where are all the Google barges? <laughs> <laughs> this is such a strange Google story. So for the past couple of years, Google has been building these giant four-story barges uh, with these like buildings on them made out of welded shipping containers. And there was one built in New London, Connecticut, and uh, there were a couple in San Francisco, California, and they were supposed to be showrooms and like party palaces for Google, where they'd they'd ship them up and down the coast and use them to like sell Google Glass or something like that. 
Um, wow. But it sounds like that whole plan is just falling apart uh, because we just found out today that the East Coast Google Barge, which was made in New London and then shipped up to Maine, Portland, Maine, is now scheduled to be dismantled. And the San Francisco one is stuck in Stockton, California, and nobody is talking about any future plans for that. And nobody really knows why Google hasn't really said anything. Yeah, this is one of those weird Google Skunk Works things where these people have so much money that sometimes they just do crazy Bond supervillain things that that make no apparent sense. The, the, the idea of the San Francisco barge was that Google might have been trying to build a showroom and an event space that wasn't subject to San Francisco zoning regulations and like permits by being out on the water. But I guess that plan fell apart, and this whole barge thing is, uh, it's, it's a no-go. Wow, yeah, that's serious coin. We forget about barges. Mm -hmm. Well, anyway, our question of the day. Uh, Sasha, this is a question to you, and Charles asked via YouTube, why does Facebook want so many separate apps on my phone? Wouldn't one app be more convenient? It absolutely would. But why does your carrier stuff bloatware onto your phone? Wouldn't it be more convenient to not have that or to have it be deletable? Uh, Facebook has said that they have a multiple app strategy right now, and that's pretty annoying. Um, my theory around that is that they actually do want to colonize the real estate on your phone so that it says Facebook, 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 and so that everything you click on is Facebook, as opposed to there being one Facebook icon and a lot of other competing services in your Makes app sense. tray. Yeah. So, no, this is not consumer friendly at all, but it has a marketing reason, and it's very similar to why we cannot get rid of the concept of bloatware in the industry. There you go, Charles. Makes sense to me. So on to our one cool thing, and we have here this Razer Blade gaming laptop. And I don't know if you want me to show yeah, that. Yeah, open it up. Show off some of the session. ports. This thing is dense. Yeah. Wow. This is... Yeah, I mean, what we have here is a $2,400 classy gaming laptop with an NVIDIA GeForce GTX 870M graphics card and a 3200 by 1800 screen. So super high res, slim, if kind of heavy, and really good performance. Um, oh yeah, it's a touch <laughs> screen too. So it's, it's, it's a beautifully well-made gaming laptop, but it runs hot and the battery life, I mean, a screen like this is just going to kill battery oh, life sure. in this form factor. So sure. you've got your trade-offs. Yeah. Um, the review is up on PCMag.com. It's a, it's a fascinating laptop, probably kind of a niche product, but definitely if you pull this out, uh, it's going to turn heads. Yeah, it better be a short game too. But anyway, so that's it for our show. Thank you so much as usual for joining us and join us again on Monday and have a wonderful day.